All right, folks, here we go. Uh, most people don't, don't know that this image right here that you're looking at. First of all, hang on. Good morning. Okay, guys, today's video is going to be maybe the most mind-blowing video the Lord's ever let me do. It's the last piece of the puzzle of a 17-year ministry. It goes all the way back to the alley. The, the painting you're looking at right here is the most famous, the most copied religious painting in history. It's called The Creation of Adam. Let's listen for one sec. However, we're going to center in on The Creation of Adam, which is probably the most famous of the various scenes that are found on the Sistine Chapel. Okay, so, and this is supposed to be God, and I want to, let's analyze this first. This is supposed to be God. Look at his arm wrapped around this very androgynous looking girl. It's a very masculine looking if you look at the breasts right here there's not a whole lot of breast very masculine looking and the lord's got his arm wrapped around her well when i say the lord i'm let me clear that up this image of their god it's not the lord just wait till you see what this is this is the last piece of a 17 year puzzle let me turn this air off. This is the last piece of a 17-year puzzle, folks. Grand, we're gonna. I'm gonna give you an update today on Grand Junction. I'm gonna give you your today's video is gonna be like three different things, almost like three different videos in one. But I got to do them all together because of time constraints. So let let's do this one first. This is the last piece of the puzzle. <laughs> this is so unbelievable what you're about to see. Ready? Okay, this is called The Creation of Adam. It is the most copied, the most famous religious painting in history. Okay, so it's supposed to be the hand of God touching man. And this is supposed to be God with his arm wrapped around this woman right here. Well, let's get let's get to it and let's let's do a little a couple things real quick. Okay, let me show you a couple things. Okay, so here this is called The Creation of Adam. And you can go look it up in Wikipedia, and it's supposed to be, it illustrates a biblical, biblical creation narrative from the book of Genesis, which God gives life to Adam, the first man. Now, remember what I've shown you about, now, remember this, remember I showed you Genesis 1 is very different than Genesis 2. Genesis 1 is Elohim said, God's angels and magistrates. Um, you know what? I think it's important. Everything I do, I'm going to do with the Bible up. So I'm going to pull it up very quickly, and <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to get into a long thing of which y'all already know. But I'm going to put it on the screen for any scoffer, anyone. And look, and the spirit. Uh, it's called the Ruach of Elohim. There it is. Elohim. It means God's plural. It means Right there, it means of the Supreme God, so it's not the Supreme God. The Spirit of Elohim moved over the face of the semen, right there. And we're going to go down to Genesis 1, 26 and 27, which is what this is talking about. So Elohim created man, Adam. It's not Adam from Genesis 2. Adam is Hebrew word 121. This is Hebrew word 120. So God created Adam in his own vain show, right there. Vain show. The word, it's a phantom that is figuratively an illusion. Resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. That's why the whole altar in St. Saint, uh, Saint Peter's Basilica in the Vatican is a big idol. God, The Lord God hates idols. And it says vain show. So Elohim said, let us create man in our own vain show. Now look at this. In the image, in the vain show of Elohim created he, look at that, him. He created himself, Lucifer did. He created he him, male and female, created he them. Okay, so there it is. I'll, that's all I'm going to go over on that. Then we're going to go back to this, and I'm going to show you this. Okay, so I want to show you something very important. Right here, this allegedly God with his arm around this very androgynous woman. Okay, that's the creation of Adam. Let's go back and look at the, uh, here we go. Now, let me show you something. 
<clears throat> it says God is depicted as an el elderly white bearded man wrapped in a swirling cloak while Adam on the lower left is completely nude. God's right arm is outstretched to impart the spark of life from his own finger into that of Adam whose left arm is extended to pose a mirroring God's a reminder that man is created in the image and likeness of God. See, look, they put Genesis 126. Depends on who your God is. This is their God, not my Lord. Another point is that Adam's finger and God's finger are not touching. That doesn't matter, but watch this. Many hypotheses have been formulated regarding the identity of the meaning of the 12 figures around God. So right around here, there's 12 figures. But this allegedly God with his arm around the woman leaves 11 figures and him with the female, male and female. Watch. <clears throat> According to an interpretation that was first proposed by English critic Walter Pater and is now widely accepted, the person protected by God's left arm represents Eve. So they're saying this is Eve. This is, and, and by the way, you know what, I, I won't get into all that, but I'll do a, maybe a discourse later. Due to the figure's feminine appearance and gaze towards Adam and the, look at this, the 11 other figures symbolically represent the souls of Adam and Eve's unborn progeny, the entire human race. Okay, the interpretation has been challenged on many grounds that the Catholic regards the teaching of pre-existence of souls as heretical. Consequently, the figure behind God has also been suggested to be the Virgin Mary Sophia. Look at that. The Virgin Mary, Sophia. Okay, I'm just showing you this because I don't care what they say it is. I'm going to show you what the Lord God showed his servant what it is. You want to see what it is? Y'all want to see what that is? You want to know what that is? <laughs> Let's show it. Let me show you what it is. Okay, let me just show you right now what it is. Let's just get to it. and Let's just destroy their hidden kingdom. It's my favorite thing to do, to show you what's hidden in the darkness and bring it into the light. Okay, so let's see. Let's get down to it. Let, I'm going to show you right off the bat what it is, and then we're going to go back and we're going to go through it. Okay, so there it is. There's the, uh, I took it right there. The Lord showed it to me. Y'all remember I Pet Goat? Y'all remember the old woman that's trapped in the penis? She's up here and uh, her little dungeon or keep, it's called a keep really. She's up there trapped in the tip of the penis and those are, that's her bars. She's trapped in there. <clears throat> Look at her face right there. There you go. That's what that really is. It's an old woman. There's the eye. There's the nose, there's the mouth, there's the chin, and there's the white hair. It's the whore of Babylon, the whore of the entire world. Remember the night I got saved? What did I tell you? I prayed, our Father to the sky, water and light came down on me. I was filled with life. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was beaming like, whoa. And then Michael, an angel, looked at me and said, you say a Hail Mary. And even though it didn't make sense to me, and there would be, by the way, there would be no reason that didn't make sense to me because I was born and raised Catholic. But because the new spirit that was in me, just it, all of a sudden, a Hail Mary seemed very odd. I looked at him like, and he nodded to it. And as I said the words and my testimony that the Lord God made me put on YouTube against me wanting to put it on YouTube, I said, Lord, I don't want to do it. And he said, you have to. I said these words. As I said that prayer, I felt life and light leaving my body. I felt death. How many times have I showed you when you take an image of the virgin and you turn it upside down? It's a dead sheep. How many times have I shown you a giant altar that's a dead sheep that's a bunch of God's angels melting into semen? How many times have I shown you that? A thousand to try and drill it into your head. This is a supernatural revelation. You ready? You want to see the whore? There she is. The one, the, the mother goddess of the whole world. <clears throat> she painted herself right on the top of the Sistine Chapel as God. Okay, it gets better, folks. By the way, this gets even better. You see her? There's her eye right there. You know what? Let me move that banner. There's her eye right there. See it? There's her forehead, there's her nose, there's her top lip. 
It's like a witch. It's the witch. The witch that put the curse on everybody. There she is, posing as God. Okay, freak out of your minds, folks. Now watch. Now iPad Goat makes total sense. You remember iPad Goat 2? Because the old lady's trapped in a system that's the penis. She wants out. That's why an iPad Goat, at the end of the thing, at the end of the iPad Goat uh, video, it shows, this, it shows this tower. This guy's. it's really a guy laying on his back. That's a penis. This is the penis. This guy's bent leg right here. It shows the light coming out of the penis right here is an eight-pointed star as the star of Lucifer. Everything makes total sense now. Now this old lady is trying to weave her magic spell, waving her little wand around. She's in the I bet goat. She's all waving her wand, backing up, and it's not working. Then it shows her panties, and it's a keyhole. And the keyhole has dried up. It means her... She's come to the end of her cycle. Then an iPad goat. Here comes their Messiah coming out of the Vesica Pisces. I'm not going to go over iPad goat too. You can watch it yourself. And then what comes into the daylight? The scorpion. Here's the scorpion stinger. I told you this was coming. I told everybody this was coming and you can count on it. You see the scorpion stinger right there? See the scorpion tail right there? See the claw right there? That's the scorpion's claw in the foreground. There's a there's a scorpion's body. So now they're gonna come out. They're get that now they're gonna come. The system has completed its cycle. The whore's cycle has come to completion. You know what that means, don't you? The earth is gonna hatch its fruit. Yeah, and the fruit is ripe. And the fruit that's coming out are the, the locusts that have tails like scorpions. Now, just wait. I told you it's going to get better and better and better. I'm going to take this picture right here, and I'm going to enlarge this. Yeah, I mean, this is, guys, I don't know if you guys understand what you're looking at. You are looking at the largest church in the world that says it's Christian. It's a big damn snake wearing a crown. The altar, the largest altar that they get in their, on their knees and they worship in front of is a big dead sheep. It's a bunch of God's angels melting into semen, which is exactly what the Bible says. Genesis 1 verse 2, the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. Oh, you know, it'd be really perfect. You know what? I'll just show you what it'd be really perfect. Because the Lord showed it to me. And I want to show it to you. And I just want to destroy their kingdom. I just, I'm here to destroy it. Okay, there's a nice little picture I took of uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in some movie where she's a witch. And I just put it there. So there's a witch. There's a witch. See the white hair? See the white hair coming down and see the eye. There's a witch. There's a witch. There's a witch. There's a witch. There's the whore. The whore of Babylon. The whore. The whore of the whole world. Oh, yeah. Now, ready? Well, let's just rotate that thing sideways. And let me show you a couple things that it is. One thing it is, if we rotate it sideways... I'll just grab this human brain and go right there. It's a human brain. And let me just draw around. It's the glans penis. Oh, my gosh. It's, you know what the glans penis I know? Because I've got one. It's the corona, the head of your penis. And you know that arm reaching out towards Adam? It's ejaculating. Deal with it. See it? Now, let's do it on a really small basis. There you go. Just have a look right there. There's your glance penis. That's why they put, see this part right here? This little ribbon that they decided needed to be there. It's to make it a brain as well as a glance penis. Have you ever heard someone's telling a guy you're thinking with the wrong head? Oh, because the witch in the back of your head is controlling your sexual urges and the desires of the flesh, which is contrary to the spirit of the living God. Told you so. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. There you go. There it is. So I wrote right here, glance penis. By the way, 
Uh, anyone watching this video, anyone, you need to put this in it. You know what a torrent is? Y'all need to take this picture and just plug it everywhere you can. The one that's got the writing on it. Get it in Google Images. Plug it everywhere you can. Everything you can do with Michelangelo, plug these pictures. Go plug them everywhere. There you go. This is it. It's solved. The greatest mystery ever done. Now watch this. Let me show you something really interesting. So right here, this whole system, what did it create? You see, uh, this is supposed to be Adam right here. Look how look how evil this stuff is. Watch this. You know what? I'll, I'll go right here. No, it, he doesn't have it in there. I'll go right here. Watch this. <clears throat> Let me enlarge this. It created the right side up, upside down you, and they put it in there. Look, just very cleverly. There's the there's one right side up. There's the upside down, and look, look at the person going into the dimension, being sucked into the dimension. Ah, see it? There it is. See the glans penis? It's ejaculating. There you go. It's a glans penis ejaculating, and it's a human brain, and I guarantee you it is, I, with the spiritual gift the Lord God gave me, I can absolutely guarantee you as obviously as the same building is a big damn snake wearing a crown, that is the whore of Babylon. And then, and so let me show you what it's all about then. So let's take one more look at the whore. There you go. There she is right there. See her? And the penis is ejaculating because she's controlling the human brain, the desires of the flesh, just like the old lady in I Pet Goat. There you go. All those people that think you know what I Pet Goat is, you're wrong. Love you in Christ. I'm just very blunt. You're wrong. So the whole system was to do this. You get an angel right here. You trap him in a host body. There is a fetus, there is a fetus, umbilical cord, umbilical cord. You turn an angel into a beast. You create a beast system, and they become part of the beast system, and he's got a duplicitous brain. Ready? There is one fetus, umbilical cord. There is the other fetus, umbilical cord. This is the angel that's trapped in this everlasting chains of darkness, Forward and backwards ligaments of the body is exactly what the Bible says. Jude 1, I know my Bible. <clears throat> now, the slave collar that the angel is trapped in because now he's in a host body is the beast system. There it is. See the beast? Eye, eye, nose, fang, fang. So he's changed from, I has turned from man to beast, really from angel to beast. So now you got a, an angel and you put him in the beast system, which is male and female, created he him, created he them. So what's the result of being trapped in it? Well, when you turn it upside down, the end result, when it all comes to fruition and the hive is ready to hatch and the whole cycle is completed and the old lady is dried up, that's what happens. The whole earth bursts it, its fruit. And guess what that fruit is? Locusts from the pit. Anyone want to argue with this? <laughs> yeah, okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, there's your empirical data. You, by the way, I'm going to use the Bible. I'm going to show you the Bible right in front of everyone's face to drive this home to any scoffer. For all you scoffers, you were warned. God warned you. I was the warning. And if you didn't heed the warning, go read Ezekiel 3. Go read Ezekiel 33. That's, that's, the, and here, you know, look at the verse of the day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but in his long suffering towards, to usward. Not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. By the way, the word repentance is a 180 degree turn the opposite direction. Okay, now let's look at the scripture that that solves solved all of this. This is the scripture the Lord God used when he called me to see this and understand this. Isaiah 29 Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? Because their identity is concealed. And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. I'm going to Genesis. Genesis 2. 
Okay, I'm going to go to Genesis 1 first. And when it says in Genesis 1, 26, and God said, let us make man in our image. Look at the word make. To do, make, accomplish in the broadest, widest sense. Accomplish, advance, appoint. Okay, that's what it means in Genesis 1. In Genesis 2, when the Lord God creates Adam, it's a different thing altogether. And the Lord God, see the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah. And the Lord God formed. See, as a potter, look at that. The word is yatsar, formed Adam from the clay. See, the word dust is clay. So when you read Isaiah 29, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. That's the real deal that the Lord God made in Genesis 2. That's his creation, not Genesis 1. It's the Lord God's because it's the potter's clay formed Yatsar. And I'll prove it right now. Ready? Let's go to... so. You're looking at Isaiah 29, 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Now, what does it say for the, in Genesis 2, and the Lord God, not God, the Lord God formed. Look at the word, Yatsar, especially as a potter, man from the dust. The word dust is clay. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to leave it on the word formed. Hebrew word, 3335. We're going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah 29, down to verse 15 and 16. Okay, there we go. Okay, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. What word is it? Yatzar, 335, is a, especially as a potter, I told you. Because the potter's clay, the truth lives in us. The truth, Jesus is the truth. So the truth lives inside of me now. And I cannot be fooled by the lies of the enemy anymore. They try. They'll not. They'll always try. So tur your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So there is what's going to happen to everyone that did not get converted. You're an angel. You got caught in a host body system by the whore. And you went for flesh. And because you wanted to go for flesh, you got trapped in chains of everlasting darkness which is the book of Jude. I'll prove it. The chains of everlasting darkness are ligaments of the body. Jude 1. And here the angels are that messed up. And the angels which kept not their first estate, which is us, and left their own habitation. He has reserved in, look, everlasting, forward and backwards, left and right, upside down, right side up, forward and backwards. Everlasting, chains, a band, that is a ligament of the body. Look right there in pink. Ligament of the body, shackle of a prisoner. So what are your shackles? Your body that you got because you wanted it. You got it. There you go. Lord gives you what you want. Okay, now let's keep doing this. <clears throat> now I got some more stuff to show you. Okay, I just showed you forward and backwards ligaments of the body. Let me just turn this air off again. Okay, so that's why the double-headed phoenix is facing opposite directions, male and female energies. They're in opposition, everlasting chains of darkness. So that's what that represents. And see, there it is. There's one head of a phoenix facing one way, one facing the other way. And their goal is making the two into one. That's why there's so much gender confusion going on in the world. And you see this ribbon right there? That's DNA. It's a V and it's a V intersecting, making a W. There is an X right here in the middle with a serpent crown on top because a serpent is the one that is the, the king of that system of the two double-headed phoenix. The serpent rules over it. Now, let me just break it down for you. There you go. Okay, there you go. So in the middle, you see the X right here where the two intersect. It's really... A pink V, and I put it pink, look, a pink ribbon intersecting a blue ribbon. It's like a V and a V. One's male, one's female. And it makes an X right in the middle. That's where you get X-Men from. That's where you get Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. Now, remember, I just showed you right here in the creation of Adam. Watch this. 
uh, they say that the figure behind God has also been suggested to be the Virgin Mary Sophia. Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. Well, let me show you a picture of Sophia. There's Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. You go to Google Images, and I'll, I'll prove it. You click on Google Images, and you just click on, click on Sophia. Here's a, I clicked on a Google Image Search for Sophia. Let me show you what comes up. Ready? These are all images of the goddess of wisdom. Look right there. Right there. See it? Sophia. There you go. So when you do it, Sistine Chapel equals Sophia, goddess of wisdom. So when you click on this, uh, when you click on Google Images, type in so Sophia, goddess of wisdom, it will bring up the Sistine Chapel. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Now I'm going to go to this folder. I want to show you something. Now, I've shown you this before. Here's a pumpkin with a witch carved in it. I did it because I want you to look at her frowny face. See the witch? See this old lady? I've just put her face in there because she's an old wrinkled lady. Well, you see Sophia right here? It's supposed to be this really attractive young girl. And, you know, this represents genitalia. But look at the X on her. There's actually an X. And the whole thing is actually an old woman. And I put it right here. You see the old woman right here? There's her eye, there's her eye, there's her eyebrow, there's her eyebrow, and that's her frowny mouth right there. Same as this, exactly the same. And when you turn it upside down, it becomes, well, where do you think they get all, let me ask you a question. Where do you think they get all these ideas for like the alien movie, H.R. Geiger, where do you think those ideas come from? They have to originate. Ideas, concepts, where do they come from? Well, they come from the source that you're connected to. Well, H.R. Geiger was connected to the pet. He wanted to know the source of everything, and he was into the occult with Debbie Harry, and they used to do their little demonic rituals. Well, guess what? He found it. And so that source uses him as a manifestation and he does movies, makes him rich. Oh, here, we'll do the Alien series and we'll mock everybody and there you go. Well, same thing with the Predator movies. Let me show you what happens when you turn Sophia upside down. Oh, it's the Predator from the Predator movies. It's literally exactly the Predator from the Predator movies. There you go. Okay, so now let's just get in, get, get back into it. So there you go. Now watch. I'm going to turn the double-headed phoenix upside down. There you go. It's the exact same thing. Double-headed phoenix. Predator from the Predator movies. There you go. So y'all have already seen this. You already know that when you take the big dead, when you take the altar that's the big sheep, I'll put it right here. I turned it upside down. Or, I'm sorry. It's right side up right here. I just drew in the chair when I drew in the chair it's the male penis ejaculating the seed here's a, a view from above so you can see it's exactly what it is so then I'll take the same image I'll put it right here and turn it upside down and then here it is upside down and I just colored it in for your perception and I'll slide the female reproductive system over there it is so now we know the whole system the Lord God's shown his servant the whole system well the whole altar and that window right there, which is the in entrance into the female reproductive system, the entrance into it. Let me show you a picture, a, a three-panel picture. And you can just do the math yourself. Okay, there you go. Do the math yourself. Okay, there you go. Do the mental math. Now, let's look at the whole Vatican. What's the whole Vatican? By the way, this window right here, this is the mouth of the serpent when I show you the whole Vatican. Let's have a look at that. There you go. So that window I just showed you, which is the entrance to the female reproductive system, just happens to be right here inside that building, which is the mouth of the serpent. And this is the mouth of a serpent. Do the math. Doesn't take a big brain. Do the math. There you go. Okay, that's resolved now. That doesn't require any intellectual thought because somebody did it all for you. It's been delivered. It's been hand-delivered to you. Now, back to the top of the Sistine Chapel. Well, remember an I pet goat. Where's the old lady trapped? See this old lady right here? Where's she trapped? She's trapped right inside there. She's looking out those bars of the window. That's her that's her prison. And she wants out. You know why she wants out? Because she wants out. She's she wants out. Where is she at? 
Oh, the pit. That's why the scorpions are going to hatch. See, now we know the reason for everything. Now we know the reason for I pet goat. We know the reason for this artwork. See the old lady right here? She's the same as a uh, uh, the old lady on the top of the Sistine Chapel. See this? It's the same thing. Watch. Let's see. I'll uh, I'll do this. It's the same thing. It's a glans penis. Oh my gosh. All uh, it really needs to be rotated because that part that part right there is this part right there. But there it is. I mean, you cannot think this up. So here's a glans penis with an old lady in it laid on top of I pet goat, which is an old lady with the inside of a glans penis. I wonder what the odds of that are. Like one in a hundred trillion. Okay, there's no odds. Okay, now let's keep going. So here's the system. You get an angel, you catch him in a host body system, he's got a duplicitous brain, it puts him in the beast system, that becomes his slave collar, everlasting chains of darkness, and at the end of the cycle, he becomes a locust from the pit. There's the double-headed phoenix ruled over by the serpent. Let's go to the female rival folder, and I will just slide the serpent's head right on top, right on top of that. Let's see, uh, I like showing you everything. Let's do it. See if I can find it real quick. And if I don't find it real quick, then I'll just pause it. Okay, so again, let me prove it. Remember Madonna with the big X on her? Look. Uh, there's a double-headed phoenix. I'm going to take this head of a serpent and put it right on top. There it is. The crown of the, the X chromosome system is the serpent. There it is. See it? There you go. Bam. Total bust. Okay, now... Guess what's on my parachute? And I told you I'm going to give you a little testimony. Uh, we're going to be heading to Grand Junction pretty soon, and I'm going to give you some dates that if you would like to go to Grand Junction and see the work of faith, the containers and all that, then you may go, and there will be two days where people can show up and view the container and watch uh, this skydive that may or may not happen on top of the container. We'll see. We have some stuff scheduled. We'll see if we're going to do it somewhere else. That's undisclosed at this point, but we'll let you know. So here we go. There is Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. What do you notice about Sophia? She's got an X on her. What do you notice about the movie X-Men Dark Phoenix? There you go. It's female and she's got an X on her. What do you notice about Madonna and her, her eye patch? She's got an X on her. She's got an X on her. Um, then I'm going to tell you a little story. There's my parachute. That's that's what's on my parachute. It says V for vengeance to the right. V for vengeance to the left. Because the Lord God is about to take vengeance on the duplicitous system that was created by them. See the V and the for vengeance. And then upside down V for vengeance. Okay, so let me give you a quick testimony and this is unbelievable. The other day, some things weren't actually panning out the way I'd anticipated, and I was stressing out a little bit. And I was praying over in the kitchen, and I said, I, okay, so here you go. <laughs> let, me just, let me just calm down. So I said, Lord, I don't get it. I, you know, I've done everything you asked me to do. I've done my best. I'm, I'm trying my hardest to get everything worked out, everything done. Some things weren't working out for Grand Junction, and I was really getting a little bit concerned about it. And so I said, Lord, look, I've done this. And I kind of went through a list of all the stuff that I've done in faith. And so in my kitchen, I said, Lord, I even put a big red X on a parachute to show you how much I believe that this is exactly what you're telling me to do. And I said, could you please make this happen? And I don't want to discuss what this is, but I said, could you please make this happen because it's starting to stress me out. And sure enough, when in three hours, what I'd prayed for to happen, happened. And then I also said, Lord, and could you please continue to confirm to me that everything I'm doing is exactly what you wanted me to do, just so I can have that confidence. So the next morning, I left my house to go do some errands I had to do, and I had quite a few errands. And then I got a text. I needed to get a cashier, a money order for $200, which wasn't really... You know, it, it wasn't really in my list of where I was going to drive to and what I was going to do. But the Lord said, you know, go get that, go do that and, and send that off. 
or hand that over. And so I went to the grocery store to go get a, a money order. Well, at the grocery store, you can walk up to the counter and talk to the girl, but the other people have to wait about five feet behind you between these posts that have these nylon cords that you're not allowed to, you know, that it's kind of like your little thing at the movie theater, you know, you got to stay between the, the posts and the nylon cords that go from post to post. So I was standing right there waiting to step up to the counter and I was just, you know, got to get my money order. And there is an old man right up there and the girl at the counter goes, come on up. And I was like, well, you know, the old man's there. I didn't want to infringe on his space. Uh, I, I went like, and she goes, no, come on up. So I walk up. Now the old man's kind of, he's like right in, there in my business. I don't care. I could care less. I'm just getting a money order. And so I walk up and the old man's literally like, you know, right here. And the old man looks at me and he goes, hey, how's it going? And I went, good. How are you doing? And he said, good. And then he goes, you want to see a picture of my ex? And this man was like in his mid 80s, probably. And and I looked at the girl on the other side of the counter and I go, this ought to be good. <laughs> That's the first time I was just cracked up. I go, this ought to be good. Yeah, let's see her. I said, let's see her. And so he pulls out his wallet. Let me show you what he pulled out of his wallet. That's what he pulled out of his wallet. My X with a big red X. And I, as soon as he did it, I mean, my jaw just went... <laughs> I just prayed, Lord, I put a big red X on my parachute just to show you how much I believe the next morning. Some old man is saying, hey, you want to see a picture of my X? Random. And he pulls out a big red X that says my X. Because let me tell you something. The world is our X. You know, like, you know, like ex-girlfriend, ex-lover, whatever. A guy pulled out a big red X out of his wallet. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, can I? You mind if I take a picture of that? He's like, no. So I, could, I should have done a little video, but I wasn't snapped enough. I was just like, oh my gosh. So I took a picture of it, and I put it right there next to my parachute, just to remind me who's in control. Y'all remember this image of the girl that had the tattoo on her back with the witch? Remember the witch, the girl that's got the tattoo? We're gonna go over the female rival folder later. But I want to get this out. Look at this. Look. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, my gosh. The girl that had the witch tattoo on her back. Look. It's exactly the Vatican hidden right in front of your face. Now, let me show you this piece of artwork that I saw quite a while back. And I put it in one of our folders. And I was just like, that is so perfect. It's a female, but her body, it shows this stitching like it's a covering. But the the stitching makes a sperm going towards a mouth that's got vampire fangs. I mean, look at this picture, look. And it's like a shell, and coming out of one eye is a cicada. And then they did have the head like kind of like a skull, because that's the truth. That picture is perfect. A sperm vampire fangs eat sperm it's a shell host body where the female energy is really birthing locusts out of the shell that's this is a perfect image for an artist to do that understands and knows what's really going on that's being used by their boss now again the picture of 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 what's allegedly god now it's elohim it's uh that would be elohim i don't know what happened to our let me see. Um, I don't know what happened to. Uh, well, there we go. This represents Elohim. Let us create man in our vain show. There it is. And there's 11 figures. Y'all know what 11 means in the Bible? Y'all know what the number 11? There's 11 figures around him. And then it has... a. It has their God. That's why they sing Lucifer donning his own creation right in this church. It has their God with his arm around the virgin, which is what was offered to God's angels. This is what I can give you. And the number, let me show you, let me show you the meaning of those numbers in the Bible. The number 11 means place of destruction or ruin. And let me just show you right here. Okay. Let's see. Let me look. Let me show you the number of people here. 
Okay. Okay. And it is wisely accepted the person protected by God's left arm represents Eve due to the feminine figure's feminine appearance and gaze towards Adam. And the 11 other figures represent, symbolically represent the souls of Adam and Eve's unborn progeny. 11, what does 11 mean? 11 means place of destruction or ruin. See, we got carried away to their system. That's why they have all their stuff hidden in plain sight openly. Now, if you count, if you count the female, um, if you count the female with the other 11, besides what the, what their uh, image of God is, it's the abyss, the bottomless pit, which is the number 12. See the number 12, the bottomless pit. So if we go back here, Okay, so there it is. There it is, yeah. And the eleven other and the eleven other figures represents the souls of Adam and Eve's unborn progeny. And then they mention Virgin Mary and Sophia, because that's who they worship. They they worship Sophia, they worship Eve because the fall, that's that represents the fall. And that they got God's angels to take take the bait. Remember the tennis shoes I showed you? They're called bait. The ones by YG. Watch. Well, we'll I'll just do a Google search. Watch this. We'll do Google images. Remember those tennis shoes I showed you that said F you pay me? Because you got your shoes to walk around in. Watch this. Bait. Uh There you go. See, told you. Bait sneakers, hunted for dinner. There you go. Bait sneakers, I told you. F U, pay me, lost angels, 400. What does 400 mean in the Bible? I'll show you what it means. Strong's 400. Food. So, see. They created a system so they could eat God's angels. There it is. No, you can't make this stuff up. Food. Told you. 400. See, 400. And, and the name of the clothing line is called 400. And 400 means hunted for dinner. Just hunted for, spell hunted backwards. It's dinner. Hunted for dinner. Told you. We're done. They're done. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you guys a testimony later. I'm going to load this up. Just wanted to add one little thing to this video. <laughs> Ready? Total recall, because Johnny just had it. Your whole life is... Hang on one sec. Let me put my head on. Let me, let me try that again. Sorry, folks. Okay, you ready? Total recall for Johnny. Your whole life is just a dream. <laughs> Let me put my face right there. What? Are you kidding? No, it's all been a dream. It's been one heck of a dream. See, they got you caught in a dream state in a host body system. It's not even real. It's an illusion. It's a hunting system. It's a system to hunt and destroy God's angels. All glory to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ is the Lord God come in the flesh. By the way, no one can say that except the Holy Spirit be with them. Jesus Christ is the Lord God come in the flesh. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's my Lord and Savior. He's my master. <laughs> it's over. Time's up. Party's over, guys. Told you. All right.